Russia's invasion of Ukraine has shocked and appalled the West. U.S. President Joe Biden has condemned the attack as unjustified and unprovoked. This is a premeditated attack. It is President Putin who is bringing war back to Europe. Innumerable missiles and bombs have been raining down on an entirely innocent population. But the reaction in China has been much more ambiguous. Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin are closer than ever. And while China won't endorse the war, it won't condemn it either. The results of this UN Security Council resolution, three abstentions, uh, China, India, and the United Arab Emirates. So what does China really think about Russia's invasion? And could she help Putin win the war in Ukraine? We will never know whether he warned that there was going to be a military operation. There is reporting, which the Chinese deny fiercely, that uh, they asked Putin to wait until after the Olympics were over so as not to ruin the Beijing Winter Olympics. It is true that if you talk to foreign diplomats who met the Chinese uh, either at the United Nations in New York or in Beijing on the day of the invasion, that at least Chinese diplomats seemed surprised. They didn't have a line ready to take. They had not prepared uh, the evacuation of Chinese citizens living in Ukraine. But that doesn't mean that Xi Jinping didn't know, because the truth is that in the Chinese system, the really tough decisions are taken at the top of the Communist Party, and the diplomats and Chinese embassies are way lower down the totem pole. So the Chinese official version is that they are neutral, that China is a peace-loving country, that it takes very seriously everyone's territorial integrity and sovereignty, including Ukraine. So that's the official high-minded uh, benevolent China line. The problem is that it's a pseudo-neutrality. It is a pro-Russian, anti-American pseudo-neutrality. They say that the war is the fault of America. Uh, it's the fault of NATO for expanding to Russia's borders, that Russia has every right to want to live in a secure Europe with its own security guarantees. And China's extremely strictly censored state media has been putting out basically Russian propaganda. If you're Chinese and watching state TV or looking at the heavily censored internet here, you would believe that Russian troops are behaving with extraordinary restraint, that they are there to dislodge Nazis from Ukraine, and that the Americans are the ones pouring fuel on the fire by sending new arms into this war because the Americans want this war to drag on because they want suffering to help them dismantle Russia for kind of Cold War reasons. That's two good questions and they have slightly different answers. China doesn't want this war. China doesn't like chaos. China is bound into all kinds of global supply chains. It does very, very nicely out of a kind of stable commercial trading order. So are they delighted that Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine? No, they're not. And you can tell because at one level, they're not even admitting that it's an invasion. They won't use the word because they don't like the idea that this is an invasion and a war started by Russia. Could they benefit from it? Um, it may be shocking, as we see images of women and children being killed in the streets of Ukraine, but there are already Chinese scholars out in the state media saying how this could work out nicely for China, not least because America, which they see as their big rival, is going to be distracted and tied up in Europe, leaving America less time to come and interfere in China's backyard in Asia. So if you are sitting in Taiwan, watching this war far away in Ukraine, you do have a reason to worry. Because when Vladimir Putin says that Ukraine isn't a proper country, it's actually part of Russia, you might remember Chinese leaders saying that Taiwan is not a country, it's just a province of China that needs to come back to the motherland. You might also be watching to see how much America and its allies are able to influence Putin's thinking. Are the sanctions, are the weapons supplies enough to make Putin stay his hand and leave Ukraine. Because America, above all, is the security guarantee for Taiwan. That if China attacks one day, America will either help them or even turn up and fight alongside them. Does this mean that Xi Jinping is going to speed up his attack on Taiwan? I think if you're a pessimist, you would say if he thinks America's looking weak, then that is an encouragement to go for it soon. If you're an optimist, then you would say Russia is suffering the most extraordinarily painful sanctions, and the fight isn't going brilliantly for the Russian military, even if they end up winning one day. And so if you're China, maybe you're looking at that and thinking, this is a tougher fight, 
than perhaps we were expecting. Maybe there's more resistance waiting for us than we'd hoped. And they're looking at these sanctions. How much damage do these worldwide sanctions from America and its allies inflict on Russia? Because that should give China pause for thought. So China is a very cautious power. It's a new superpower. It is not going to come to Russia's aid militarily. Not least, you know, China has all these shiny new weapons, but it hasn't fought a war since the late 1970s, and that was a brief war with Vietnam that it lost. So they're going to not come to the rescue militarily. I don't even think they're going to come and mediate and have some grand peace conference because everyone knows they're on Russia's side. They're not neutral. The one area that Russia will be hoping for help, I think, is that as these sanctions imposed by America and its allies bite really hard on the, on the Russian economy, Russia's only hope its only friend with deep pockets is China. And so Russia is going to be hoping that China buys more oil and gas, buys more Russian wheat, buys more Russian kind of minerals. But if the Russians are hoping that China disobeys the sanctions and actually helps Russia cheat, then I think they may be disappointed because at the end of the day, China is an exceptionally self-interested power. And it will always look out for China's interests. And that doesn't mean uh, getting Chinese banks and Chinese companies sanctioned. I think if we saw a sort of massive escalation, if this looked like tipping into a world war, if this looked like, you know, God forbid, using kind of chemical weapons or even sort of small tactical nuclear weapons, which is one of the kind of fears out there, I think China would find that very, very disturbing. Remember that China's journey to supremacy, China's rise is based on being the place that manufactures stuff and sells for export. America and Europe are between them the most important market for Chinese goods. So if this really got out of control, perhaps China might not be as upset as we might hope by lots of people being killed in the streets of Ukraine, but the Chinese economy would go into a tailspin uh, if the world really fell off a cliff. China is watching and waiting and trying to stay out of trouble and to calculate how to take advantage of this. But if anyone is expecting China to come to the rescue, uh, either with its armies or even with its diplomacy, then I'm afraid they're going to be disappointed. China is all about China's interests and it's not going to change, particularly when the world is in an incredibly dangerous state. China is really clear that it's a friendship with no limits, uh, that China and Russia see the world in very similar ways when it comes to, you know, the wickedness of democracies criticizing uh, one party systems or, or sort of autocrats. Um, but they don't want an alliance. Why? Because alliance is kind of a technical promise that if someone attacks your ally, that you will go and fight for them. And Putin is proving the Chinese right when they thought Russia is actually just too fond of adventures uh, and you know, invading other countries for us to want to be bound uh, in anything like an alliance. So it's not an alliance. Is this the beginning of a world order? You know, it could be. And one of the interesting things here in Beijing is when I talk to ambassadors and diplomats and Chinese scholars, they're very clear about just what a big moment this is. This is China showing its hand. Uh, although it's officially neutral, no one believes it's neutral for a minute. They are an anti-American, pro-Russian power that is tearing up decades of Chinese caution. This is a moment uh, for, for China and Russia, two giant autocracies, to have each other's backs in a kind of historic struggle with America and to basically say that the entire rules-based order put in place after the Second World War no longer works for China and Russia and they are willing to challenge it pretty much openly. That is a huge moment and we don't know how this story ends. To read more about how China views the crisis in Ukraine, click the link. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.